Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week's 10 days for today's second video. This will take us to the start of September. Uh, we'll also have a look at the uh, Bayesian Climate Centre next 40 days. That takes more or less to the end of September. So, um, all eyes on September, I guess you could say, uh, for today's video update. So, we've released a five-day forecast. It's going to be a five days of change. We're starting off still very warm and humid in the south but cooler air is moving into the north and a big drop in the temperature is on the way. A uh, big drop in the temperature is on the way for uh, the second half of this week. And the bank holiday weekend is actually going to have a little flavour of autumn in the air. I think it'll be a rather autumnal sort of feeling bank holiday weekend. But have a look at the five day forecast and uh, see what you think. I say this one is extending us out into the week to 10 day time frame. I uh, just say because of the five day forecast, Podcast, uh, we won't have a bank holiday weekend update for you today because we're covering more or less the same period uh, that we are with the 5D forecast. It's still what I mean. So just be repeating ourselves. So the um, final, it's the fifth and final uh, late summer, late August bank holiday weekend update will be with you tomorrow evening. That'll be the last one of those been that's been quite so many uh for uh for uh, this year's updates due to the fact that a week ago lost the internet connection uh so that'll be with you tomorrow evening the uh late summer back on the weekend final update but of course the five day forecast covers that whole period anyway Right, so we're going to start off in the tropics again. So, uh, once again, we see that in the tropical Atlantic, there is no tropical cyclone activity expected in the next 48 hours. Very quiet currently in the tropical Atlantic. Not much going on. And over into the uh, eastern uh, part of the tropical North Pacific, also very quiet there. Tropical cyclone activity is not expected in the next 48 hours. But if we go out into the Central Pacific, and I didn't talk about this in uh, yesterday's video, but I'm going to talk about it today. Uh, so, in the Central uh, Tropical Pacific Ocean, we have Hurricane Lane. Now, Hurricane Lane has become a very uh, major hurricane indeed. If I show you... The overlay here, you can see that Hurricane Lane is now a Category 5 hurricane. That is as strong as uh, the categories get. So that means this uh, hurricane uh, has sustained maximum sustained winds of 160 miles an hour. And with a Category 5 hurricane, Gusts can go in excess of 180 mile an hour. You can actually get 200 mile an hour gusts of wind uh, with Category 5 hurricanes. And uh, as I say, sustained winds of 160 miles an hour. Now, Hurricane Lane is bearing down on Hawaii. So I can show you the forecast track from the National Hurricane Center for Hurricane Lane, uh, Category 5 Hurricane Lane. That's its current position uh, just there. Uh, through today and uh, tomorrow, that major hurricane is going to be pushing northwards. These are the Hawaiian Islands uh, just here. So Hurricane Lane is on its way to Hawaii. It's expected to arrive uh, sort of late tomorrow, late Thursday, and then going through to Friday. Now, the only saving grace is that as Hurricane Lane is heading for Hawaii, it looks like it's going to be downgraded a little bit. Where we've got these M's, that's where we've got a major hurricane. A major hurricane is Category 3 and above. Um, well, at the moment, we know we're at Category 5, which is as intense uh, as it gets. So, major hurricanes continue up to Thursday evening. 
But then as Lane gets to Hawaii, and I suppose it's just as it's meeting the landmass, really, of the Hawaiian Islands, just looks like it's going to ease a little bit. But nevertheless, this will still be a major impact, uh, at least a category two hurricane. And of course, the forecast suggestion that it weakens a bit as it gets to Hawaii might be, uh, might be wrong. So this is a major weather event that is heading for uh, Hawaii. If you've got anybody watching in Hawaii, you will need to uh, take uh, all of the precautions that are going to be issued over the next few hours in terms of uh, how to deal with uh, Hurricane Lane. This, this is a major, severe, life-threatening weather event that is heading for Hawaii right now, right as we speak about hurricanes due to arrive tomorrow evening, Thursday evening, and then into uh, Friday, pushing northwards through the Hawaiian Islands. So I think we'll be hearing quite a bit about Hurricane Lane in uh, the next few days. Right, let's come back close to home. These are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next two weeks. The red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature. You're looking at Northampton, local to me, uh, today. So it's starting off pretty warm with the upper air temperatures at 15 degrees at 850 HPA. But, uh, well, from today onwards, those uh, upper air temperatures are on their way down, a bit of a crash actually taking place in the next 24 hours or so with those upper air temperatures going cooler than average by the time you get through to the end of the week. And then those cooler than average temperature, uh, upper air temperatures continue into the bank holiday weekend as well. Now, later in the bank holiday weekend, those temperatures do pick up a little bit, the upper air temperatures, but it's associated with an area of low pressure. So although the upper air temperatures are lifting up a bit later in the bank holiday weekend around Sunday, probably won't realise that temperature potential, to be honest, uh, because it'll be cloudy, it's likely to be quite wet. Um, so really autumnal uh, sort of feel to the air over this bank holiday weekend. And it looks like we're keeping it pretty cool, really, with these upper air temperatures going through to the end of the month. That's the 1st of September just there. Overall, no better than average once today is out of the way and uh, often a little bit cooler than average. We expect the centering temperature to do a little bit of a crash, I think, in the final day. So that could be quite entertaining to see how far that's going to dip in the next uh, few days through to the end of the month. As far as the first week of September is concerned, that's this period just here, the ensembles are lifting up up, so it does look as though it's turning warmer through the first week of September. Although, I'll well, show you the operational run that's involved in a moment. And it's perhaps not quite as clear cut now that we're going to build this high pressure up through the first days of September. But that's the way the GFS ensembles are still trending, I think, wanting to build up that high pressure through the first days of September. As far as precipitation is concerned, quite a lot of rainfall spikes coming up over the next few days. Actually, we are going into a more unsettled period and we're timing it with the bank holiday uh, weekend, which is a little bit unfortunate. But, but of course, we did have the two exceptionally warm, even hot bank holidays in May. So we can't really grumble. We've done very well for bank holiday uh, bank holiday weekends uh, so far this year. Easter wasn't too bad either, uh, I don't think. So uh, we can't really uh, grumble. And there will be some drier weather around at times. We're focusing on bank holiday Monday as being perhaps the best day of the bank holiday weekend. Although even then, temperatures will probably still be quite cool. Uh, then we get through to the end of August inside of September. We have got quite a drying trend showing up at that point. Temperature anomalies are looking like this from the 22nd through to the 30th of August. We're more or less coming out cooler than average in most parts of the country. It's particularly evident for the north and the west. So Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, Wales coming out cooler than average there. Down in the far southeast of the country, it probably is taking into account today's warmth. Uh, so when we look at these tomorrow, that could well be looking cooler than average, I think, through all parts of the country. It'll be interesting to see whether that happens. Uh, a little bit cooler as well over Scandinavia. Things are cooling down a bit there, especially Norway. France is cooling down a little bit as well. Southern parts of Europe and into kind of like the east and the southeast, that area just there, that looks like it's the warmest part of Europe uh, at the moment. 
precipitation anomalies look like that still coming out a bit drier than average so nothing too dramatically unsettled but there will be uh, some spells of rain around over this bank holiday weekend how much though is a little bit uncertain actually it could turn into quite a wet day uh, on Sunday but just a little bit of uncertainty about uh, about the timing of that. This Alba GFS is looking for uh, Saturday then. So we've got this ridge of uh, transient ridge of high pressure building in from off the Atlantic. So Saturday could be a drier day, but then on Sunday we bring this next area of low pressure to uh, through. That could bring us quite a cool, cloudy, wet day on sunny bank holiday Monday. Little bump of high pressure could give us a drier day uh, then, and that's still lasting into the south on Tuesday. So it could be uh, uh, reasonably pleasant on Monday and Tuesday in the south, but still cloud and rain like up in the north. Then Wednesday next week, a week's time, we push down another cold front across the country. So again, that could have quite an active band of rain associated with it. And it turns a lot cooler again from the north and west behind that. Into the more extended range, here comes the build of high pressure for the end of the month from the Atlantic. So uh, we're up to day 10, which is the 1st of September. And we're looking pretty dry there in that area of high pressure and probably pleasantly warm. You could just about imagine temperatures going into the mid. 20s Celsius with that but it doesn't last as long this high pressure now with the GFS run so this is Sunday the second where we begin to pull that high pressure back out into the Atlantic a little bit and we actually start to go into a more unsettled phase again now on this GFS run through the first week of September and that's how we finish up with the GFS run on Friday the 7th of September still trying to build this ridge up from the southwest but actually we're in quite a flat westerly flow and certainly for the northern part of the country, it looks rather unsettled. So any incursion of high pressure uh, around the turn of the month from this with this GFS run is really quite short-lived. Let's see what the ECM has to say. So this is Saturday, bringing down this very cool, chilly uh, and showery northerly wind. Then we go through from Sunday to Monday and not quite as unsettled as the GFS is showing the Sunday to Monday, but still a bit on the cool side, still a bit changeable, really. Then into the early part of next week, so high pressure again is quite close to the south, could bring some reasonably dry weather through the early part of next week into southern parts of the country, always more unsettled in the north and in the west too. Up to the end of the month, the high pressure again trying to ridge up from the southwest. This is day 10, the first day of September, when low pressure is rolling back through from the Atlantic. So that's been cloud and rain across the country through the first day of September. Not as strong with that build of high pressure on the ECM run either for the beginning of September now. And then we've got the GEM with the wings in from the north over the uh, weekend or on Saturday. Anyway, there's a little bump of high pressure that may give us drier conditions uh, for time anyway, late Saturday and Sunday. Watch out for cold nights, by the way, at the end of this week. This weekend. We cover this in the Friday broadcast, but I do think there's a risk of ground frost the northern parts of the country over the bank holiday weekend. This is bank holiday money. It's a little bit later moving this low pressure in. So this is the same low pressure that the GFS wants to move in for Sunday to give us quite a dismal day on Sunday. The GM is a bit uh, slower moving it in, but it is moving it in by midnight on bank holiday Monday. That's bringing cloud and rain in from off the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, then we go through to midnight Tuesday, and that low pressure is gone, but it may give us a bit of a disappointing bank holiday Monday if it is delayed, as the GFS is shown. By Tuesday, the ridge is coming back into south, so it's a bit drier and warmer there, but still cloudy, showery, up in the north, quite cool uh, conditions. And then into the second half of next week, high pressure never too far away with the GEM, so that's uh, day 10. First uh, Saturday, the 1st of September, <coughs> excuse me, where we have this little bump of high pressure from off the Atlantic. That looks a reasonably dry start to September, but how long that high pressure would last, I'm not sure. We have got quite a bit of low pressure in the Atlantic, which is just waiting to flatten off uh, that ridge. But that's probably the most settled out of the three models, actually, for uh, the beginning of September. 
Finally, just for leave you with the charts from the Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days. So these are the 500 millibar heights. They broke it down into 10 day periods. The first 10 day period will take us from the 21st through to the 30th of August with above average heights centred around and to the west of the UK. And then we have below average heights up to the north. The jet stream is still up there. So the Beijing Climate Centre is suggesting that in the next 10 days, we do have a lot of settled weather. We know it's going to be a little bit on the changeable side, though, so it may be a bit too strong uh, with that signal uh, for the ridge. Then we go through to the next 10 day period, takes us from the 31st of August to the 9th of September. Still with above average heights close to the country, but possibly weakening a little bit. The main, uh, the main sort of low pressure goes to the north, the jet stream. Still mainly to the north, but some energy possibly starting to move a little bit further southwards from the jet stream as well. Nevertheless, that's still probably mainly dry and settled through the first 10 days of September. Then we go through to the next 10-day period, which is the 10th through to the 19th of September, and signs that the ridge is pulling out into the middle of the Atlantic then. So the low pressure to the north is actually weakening a little bit, uh, but at the same time, the jet stream will be starting to move southwards. Uh, so we're splitting apart the ridge, if you like, moving some of the energy southwards a bit like that. And so I reckon that's a transitional period there. The 10th to the 19th of September, breaking down the high pressure, gradually turning things more and more unsettled. And then we get to the final 10-day period, which is the 20th through to the 29th of September, and we have gone definitively into autumn then with below average height centred over the top of the UK. The ridge is in the central part of the Atlantic. The jet stream is going to our south. So we're on the cool side of the jet within that trough within the 500 millibar flow. And so that is a proper onset of autumn. Uh, then we go through to 20th, 29th September, same part of September. Basically, we go into uh, autumn. So, or definitively autumn, because it's actually going to feel a little bit autumnal this weekend, but it's not, it's still August, so it's not definitive. That's like a definitive switch to autumnal conditions in the second half of September. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, the Bank Holiday weekend looks like it's going to be relatively cool, and just how changeable it gets is still uncertain, but I think most of us can expect at least a little bit of rain at some point over this Bank Holiday uh, weekend. Next week, high pressure never too far away from the south. But even then, we do get some cooler incursions from the north. And there are now a few question marks about this high pressure through early September. So yesterday's model output was very, very strongly keen on building up large ridges uh, for the first week of September and bringing us into a summer-like pattern. There are still hints of that within the model output today, but certainly models have backed away from it quite a lot. At least the operational runs have. Uh, I think the GFS ensembles are probably still going for it to some degree. But just how much high pressure we get through that first week of September, I think that is a little bit on the uncertain side for today. We'll have more for you tomorrow, so uh, there'll be more updates coming up tomorrow. Uh, and also, of course, where we've got your uh, final uh, update for the bank holiday weekend, but we cover that in the Friday forecast anyway, so go and have a look at that if you want to know about bank holiday. Right, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.